Sean, I do want to say that I really think that uh, you should have disclosed your relationship with uh, Cohen when you talked about him on this show. You Situation, understand the obviously. nature of it, Professor? I'm yeah. going to deal with this later yeah, in the show. I understand. It, but it was minimal. I, I put out understand. a statement and about it. You should it. have said that. Sean Hannity taking heat from all sides for hiding some of his links to Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. That was legal scholar Alan Dershowitz speaking truth to Hannity last night. And tonight, Hannity is actually in additional hot water because he used other Trump-linked lawyers who appear on his show without apparently disclosing their work, including Trump defenders on Fox like Victoria Townsend and the top Trump lawyer left on Donald Trump's Russia defense team, Jay Sekulow who joins Michael Cohen in what is now apparently a secret club of Hannity guests who do legal work for Hannity. Here is Hannity interviewing Trump's lawyer, who's also his lawyer, about Trump and the Russia probe. So let me guess. So now they're going to go into finances and the fact that Donald Trump sold a, a property to some Russian oligarch in, what, 2008 and made a profit because the Russians knew then that he'd run for president and win. Is that how, is well, that, how that worked that, 10 that years ago? That would be so... Well, that is so beyond the mandate uh, that is uh, in existence for the special counsel that our position would be that they cannot reach any of those issues. I'm joined now by the man you just saw on television, Alan Dershowitz, professor emeritus at Harvard Law School and the author of Trumped Up, How the Criminalization of Political Differences Endangers Democracy. And I want to mention in a few minutes, I'm also going to speak to our other legal friend, Maya Wiley, a former counsel to the mayor of New York City. Uh, but I begin with you, Professor Dershowitz. You told me to call you Alan. Sure. Uh, I want to say, uh, to get it out of the way, to the best of my knowledge, uh, you're not my lawyer. Well, we can talk about that. <laughs> but, you know, people come to me every day, hand me a dollar on the street or at cocktail parties and say, I just need you to give me a little bit of legal advice about my brother-in-law. And I say, having taught legal ethics for 35 years, no, I don't give legal advice to anybody except that they're my client. Right. We need a retainer agreement. Doesn't have to be for money. I do half my cases pro bono. But we have to have an agreement that I will not disclose what you've told me. Last night, you made the point we just showed uh, about Michael Cohen. Tonight, we learned that Sean Hannity also used the legal Legal services of Jay Sekulow. Should he have disclosed that? Yes. I think you make full disclosure when in doubt. Having said that, I don't think anybody believes that Hannity would have said or done anything different had he never met Michael Cohen, had he never met Jay Sekulow. Hannity is Hannity. He's going to do anything to defend Donald Trump and to attack Mueller. Everybody knows that. So he didn't substantively deceive his audience, but he should have made the disclosure. Why do you think he's employing so many lawyers who also work for the president? Well, because they all have the same uh, interests. They all uh, love Donald Trump. He can do no wrong. And uh, they're part of a club. I'm not part of that club. You know, people try to lump me together with these people. I am an independent defender of the Constitution. I am free to criticize Donald Trump, as I have. For example, when Trump sent out a tweet saying Comey ought to go to jail, I railed at President Trump and say, you're doing the same thing they're doing to you. You're trying to criminalize political differences. No, Comey ought not to go to jail, and neither should you. There is something a little different, though, which is, unlike most Americans, perhaps because of, of, of your career and status, uh, you do dine with the president, which I believe you did recently. I saw on Fox News, I'm going to play this as well, because it's consistent with the point you raised. When asked about advice to the president, you explained the only way he's going to get your, your quote-unquote advice. Take a look. Look, I don't give advice to the president except on television. If he wants to listen, he can listen. Uh, if he's watching Fox or the Beat, he does hear from you, though. What, what is most important that he do in the middle of this Mueller probe? Well, first of all, I was on television about Clinton. I've been on television about everybody who has been Many charged things. with crime, and people can listen or not listen. Look, what I said on television is don't pardon, don't fire, don't tweet, and don't testify. Very simple advice. <laughs> That's uh, four don'ts. Well, the testifying is really important because we now learned a secret from Comey. Here's his secret. He said, why did I write an exoneration letter of Clinton before we even interviewed her? Well, he said, an investigation, we make up our minds first, we figure it out, and then we bring in the person like Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump to see if they're going to lie. Comey is telling Trump. He did write that in the book. Right that 
He's telling Trump, if you come and testify, it's only because we want to put you in a perjury trap. That's a very good argument for why Donald Trump should not speak to special prosecutors, if he can avoid it. Well, prosecutors, as you know, say that they're not looking to do a perjury trap just because they want to test someone's veracity. Let me play something else that James Comey said mm -hmm. that's turning a lot of heads as he's on this book tour, because he is, of course, involved in the Mueller probe. He's, He's a major witness. Major witness sure. um, and no one can prejudge what they find and what should be done about it, I mm -hmm. think, at this mm -hmm. early stage. No one responsible. And yet James Comey just said this. I think impeaching and removing Donald Trump from office would let the American people off the hook and have something happen indirectly that I believe they're duty bound to do directly. People in this country need to stand up and go to the voting booth and vote their values. Does he show poor judgment this week in weighing in that way when the probe isn't over and he's a witness? Absolutely. And if I were Donald Trump's lawyer, which I'm not, I would be jumping up and down for joy about Comey's book tour because he's going to have to be cross-examined. And you love to cross-examine a witness who's written a book, who has manuscripts, earlier drafts of the book, who is being paid to write the book. It is the joy of a criminal defense attorney's day when he can get to cross-examine a witness who's exposed himself in this way. If, if you're right that Comey is hurting himself, and I, I have uh, reported on this show about some of the apparent lapses in judgment based on his own writings in the book, why do you think he's doing this? Well, I think he needs to vindicate himself. Uh, look, I understand being hated by both sides, believe me, but he's being hated with a passion. You that, feel that you have haters? Oh. I know I have haters. You should read my emails. Uh, the Trump people don't think I'm supportive enough of Trump, and my old friends on the left think I'm a Trump lapdog. Do you ever and tell them, don't hate the player, don't hate the lawyer, hate the game? I talk about McCarthyism a lot, that when I defend the Constitution, you know, I started when I was in Brooklyn College. I defended the right of communists to speak. I hated communists, and they called me a communists, the mm. McCarthyites did. Then I defended the rights of Nazis to march through Skokie. They call me a Nazi. I defended the rights of unpopular criminals. I'm a murderer. That's McCarthyism. Now, however, the enemies of McCarthyism are railing against me because I'm supporting the Constitution. Remember, it was H.L. Mencken who said, first they come after the SOBs. They establish the precedents, and they use them against the rest of us. And, and it's a point many free speech litigators make. I want to play for you. Yeah, uh, you know, the ACLU well, let me, used let me play to be for you. free speech litigator. Well, before right. we go there, let me play for you Michael Avenatti, right. who's another lawyer who does appear on television. I don't know if you've seen his work. Uh, yeah. Uh, but he's making some big claims. I want to get you to, to handicap them. Sure. Here he was today. Where is the intersection between your case specifically, which is about invalidating an NDA, and that raid on Monday? Well, it could be by way of money laundering, it could be way, by way of bank fraud, or it, it could be by way of uh, campaign finance violations as it relates to this $130,000 payment. Al Capone was not convicted of murder. He was convicted of tax evasion. He's in a civil matter right. involving right. Uh, the president and Michael Cohen. What do you think of him weighing in on this other criminal case, and what do you think of Michael Avenatti's lawyering uh, up to this point? Well, first of all, he's making my point completely. That is, you can find crimes anywhere if you look hard enough. He's already looking and finding crimes, money laundering, bank fraud, uh, what else? Uh, you know, you can find crimes if you look hard enough. It was, I think, uh, Barry, Lavrenti Barry, the head of the KGB, who said to Stalin, show me the man and I'll find you the crime. Special prosecutors Are you complaining Michael Avenatti crimes. to the KGB, Oh, sir? no, 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 okay. I'm not. I'm just saying you can find crimes. That's why civil libertarians have to be concerned is he, about that. Is he that. being an effective lawyer here? He is. He's being a tough lawyer, effective lawyer. He's representing his client, and uh, he's absolutely right. Civil matters can turn into criminal matters. Ask Bill Clinton. And before I let you go, and I'll also turn to Maya Wiley for her take on, on much of this, I have to get into the famous collusion question, because you have argued very forcefully, and on the Beat special we did about this, as you may recall, uh, that people overstate collusion as a right. process that isn't a crime. But take a look at this new report in McClatchy, which NBC, I want to be very clear, has not verified, uh, that says they have sources about Mueller finding evidence that Michael Cohen did go to Prague during the campaign, mm -hmm. where there is an allegation that he may have strategized with a Kremlin-linked figure about Russian meddling, including potential felonious email hacking. If that kind of thing comes on the board, if there's evidence of that, would you say that is the kind of crime that's connected to collusion? Let me tell you that it depends on what he means by Russian hacking. If the Russian hacking already occurred and the Trump campaign said, oh, you've hacked, give us 
the information we want to use it, that's like the New York Times publishing Manning, Snowden, and uh, the Pentagon Papers. If, on the other hand, he said, hack, let me tell you who to hack. Here's the Republican, the Democratic National Committee. Of course, that's accessory to a felony. That would be accessory to a felony. Uh, Professor Alan Dershowitz, we always learn a lot from you, hearing about you, hearing about your haters, hearing your analysis. I appreciate you coming on the beat, sir. Thank you. Uh, Maya, I want to turn to you. We went through a lot. Um, picking up, though, on the Prague point, this is a place where Michael Cohen could have exposure that relates back to the thing that Mueller's investigating. Absolutely. And first of all, he also may have a perjury charge <laughs> or charges added, uh, depending on what he had said under oath around Prague. He's actually been quite vocal about saying, I didn't do it, I didn't go. Uh, we don't know. And I think it's important to say we don't know. But certainly, if he did go, it, then the question is, what happened there? What were the conversations? It's, it's going to be a long process, and I think it's critically important that we do let the process play out without making conclusions. But I would say Michael Cohen has a lot to worry about. And what do you think about Sean Hannity? Uh, employing or having legal work done by so many Trump lawyers, which is something I just didn't know yeah. we would be covering tonight. Well, there's nothing illegal about who you choose as your lawyer. Sure. So I think, first of all, we want to make sure we're not conflating that with the criminal investigation mm -hmm. unless or until some additional information comes forward. I think the fact that Sean Hannity did not disclose is in and of itself very problematic for our democracy and for the notion that we will be told what kind of relations people have when they're commenting. I certainly agree with, with Mr. Dershowitz that there's no secret to who Hannity is friends with or not friends with. It's not really a closed secret, but it's still important, I think, that we hold journalistic ethics just like we hold legal ethics, just like we hold and let me ask you about, that protect about us. And let me ask you about something I was learning about tonight. I, the best part of coming on the beat is you, you learn things. What do you think about Dershowitz's four laws for Trump? who is known to watch television, so he may have heard the laws, don't tweet, don't pardon, don't testify, and don't fire prosecutors. I think it is very sound advice. If I were Donald Trump, and I think his legal team has been saying all of the above to him, quite frankly. All the above, but I, he doesn't follow and, it. But he hasn't <laughs> followed it. And I think it's all you have to do is read news reports to know he would be in a stronger position today if he followed those three pieces of advice. Final word before we go? Well, if he hadn't fired Comey, we would not be sitting here We wouldn't today. be here in this uh, way. But I do think that the defense team has been focusing too much attention on the Comey investigation of obstruction of justice and collusion, where I don't think he has as much vulnerability as the potential vulnerability for pre-presidential activities of a business and an allegedly sexual nature. Can That's where his problems briefly. lie. Just briefly, I do want to say, though, this is where I do disagree with you, Mr. Dershowitz, because I think there really is a lot more indication that they may, they may there may be some serious crimes here that have been committed and that it is critically important. I think we would still be seeing here if Comey had not been fired. I just think the obstruction charge would not be one of the charges. Right, but then there may not have arisen a special counsel. I want to give my thanks to the law firm of Dershowitz and Wiley tonight. Uh, uh, thank we'll you. Wiley and Dershowitz. <laughs> Wiley and Dershowitz. Even better. Uh, thank you both. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.